Does that look about right? Yeah, you guys can see me. Uh, look, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I accidentally recorded all these episodes out of order. Don't really know how that happened, but uh, it did. And so even though this is the third episode that's going live in this series, it's actually the last episode that I'm recording here at the Underdog Fantasy Super Bowl house here in Phoenix, Arizona. If you couldn't tell by the comically large cacti that we have strewn about the grounds. And I am recording this the night of the Super Bowl. The Chiefs literally just won it a few hours ago. And it's kind of given me a new perspective on this A.D. Mitchell episode because I spent the entire year watching the Chiefs receiving core scratch and claw and fight and ultimately fail most of the time. They weren't very good. And then they won the Super Bowl anyway. Like, it just didn't even matter. And so now I'm thinking, man, we can't let the Chiefs get A.D. Mitchell because if the Chiefs got A.D. Mitchell, we're all fucked. Okay, maybe that was slightly dramatic, but still, Mitchell's prospect profile is really, really impressive. He's a big body at about 6'4", 200 pounds, and he plays like it. He has really solid deep speed, so he can attack all areas of the field. His hips are also very fluid for his size, and his hands are incredibly reliable with only one drop on the entire season and a drop rate of only about 1%, which, again, are both elite numbers. Plus, in terms of deep ball tracking, he's one of the most gifted receivers in the nation at making very awkward adjustments through contact deep down the field. Taking all that into account, just on the surface, it kind of seems like he has a pretty similar profile to Roma Dunze, who's going to go in the top 10 picks most likely. Odunze just so happens to have a much longer history of production and flashing that skill set, so he's seen as more of a quote-unquote sure thing, whereas Mitchell is kind of seen as a one-year wonder by some people. Where Mitchell differs from Adunze, in my opinion, or at least differs the most, is that Rome is a bit bigger and a bit more physically overwhelming, while Mitchell trades that physicality for just jaw-dropping smoothness. And when I say smooth, I mean like freshly Windex glass type smooth. His ability to get in and out of breaks seemingly without ever changing gear is just amazing, and it almost makes it look like he's moving a lot slower than he actually is, even while he's just running by people. For that reason, to me, his movement style is uncannily similar to C.D. Lamb, who is my main player comp for him, because Lamb is just as fluid, just as balanced, and is just as prolific at running his routes without ever needing to slow down or tip off when the breakdown is coming. Everything is always just happening at one speed, and I mean that in a good way. I understand that the yak skills for Lamb historically have been a lot better than what Mitchell has shown at Texas, but I also think that Mitchell's role at Texas didn't really allow him to be a yak threat anyway. He had the seventh highest average depth of target among all receivers in the FBS at 16.8 yards, which is incredibly deep. And remember that there are 134 teams in the FBS and a lot of receivers per team. So literally out of over a thousand receivers, he ranks number seven in average depth of target. Just barely over 30% of his routes combined were screens, slants, hitches, flats, or crossing routes, which are all generally the routes that generate the most yards after catch opportunities, and that's a lot less than CD who ran those same types of routes at a combined rate of about 45%. So again, I'm not saying that Mitchell is definitely the yak threat that Lamb is, because most people are not the yak threat that Lamb is. But I am saying that Mitchell hasn't really been given a proper chance to prove that he's not a yak threat, just because the role that he played at Texas was primarily a down-the-field target. And if that yak ability, or lack of yak ability, is the only major difference to their game, while everything else is still fairly similar, I mean, to me, 80% of C.D. Lamb is still a pretty damn good receiver and well worthy of a first round selection. One thing I do want to highlight about Mitchell's skill set today, though, and to me, this is the one thing you really should take away from this eval, is just how advanced he is in the subtleties of route running. I think a common trap that a lot of people fall into when evaluating route running in young receivers and especially prospects is they look at how sharp their cuts are or how violent their feet are when they break down. but. That's not really route running, that's just movement skills, which obviously is important too, but for a totally different reason. The only thing that clips like this one really proved to me is that a receiver's done a shitload of ladder drills in their life, but not that they actually understand route running. But when I watch A.D. Mitchell, it is immediately apparent that he understands how to manipulate a DB with his routes. This is an example from the Kansas game in week five, and on the surface, this just looks like a simple 17-yard comeback route 
underneath a corner that is playing a bail technique in zone coverage, which is true, but there's so much more to it than that. And this is what route running actually is. The reason Mitchell was able to be so wide open on this catch is he starts his route by widening this corner to the outside because he knows the corner has to stay at least even with him so he can do a zone turn to the inside with his eyes still on the quarterback. And then once he almost gets to the top of the numbers, he then sells hard vertically as if he was just trying to widen out that corner to create space for him to bend back into the seam in the first place. At this point, the corner is basically just guessing because this route can go in basically any direction. And so once Mitchell gets within three yards of that DB, he stems the route back outside, threatening a fade. Mitchell is climbing into the corner's blind spot here, so that corner can't really read Mitchell's route anymore. And he has to respect that positioning, which means the defender has to fully turn and burn to get deep just in case that fade is real. It's at this exact moment that Mitchell knows he's got him. He slams on the brakes, comes back to the ball, and gets an explosive gain of 17 yards. And even though this all looked really simple and really easy, that is what good route running is supposed to make it look like. It's about being able to run a route in a certain way to move a defender and to force their hips to point in the wrong direction so that even if their eyes are on the quarterback during the entire play, they're not actually in a spot to make a play on the ball. So in a way, good route running is just a way to protect a quarterback from making a bad throw by forcing the DB to be wrong. In every single game that Mitchell played for Texas, you can see examples of how well he understands that core concept of route running. You can see him play with the pacing of his routes, sometimes slow playing releases and then using his burst to win vertically. Or maybe late in the route, he'll see a DB have a leverage advantage on him and so he'll add in rocker steps or head fakes or just subtle little double moves at full speed just to take back the positional advantage. He has this almost improvisational style that's less about running a route exactly as it's drawn up and more so about understanding what subtle movements he can add to a route to make a corner's life really, really hard. And I'll tell you what, if you also watch a lot of Cowboys games like I do, that is the exact same way that I would describe C.D. Lamb's play style. It's subtle, it's smooth, it's artistic in a way, but most of all, it works. Is Adonai Mitchell the best receiver in this draft class? No, not even close, obviously. But he's at least in the top five, and if he ends up going to the right situation, cough, cough, Kansas City, he's probably going to outproduce a couple of the guys that go ahead of him in that same top five. I guess overall, my point is this. Underrate AD Mitchell at your own peril, because if he's already this good after basically just one healthy season as a starter, just imagine what he could be three years from now. Like I said in the beginning of the show, uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more of this house over the next uh, several weeks, because over the last six days that I've been here, I have recorded more shows in a six day period than I ever have in my life. Okay, we have like several weeks of content coming from this place. So you're going to see a lot more parts of it, not just the driveway at 1 a.m. But at least uh, chronologically in terms of recording these episodes, this is the last one. I'm hopping on a flight back to L.A. tomorrow. Going to go sleep in my own bed for the first time in a while between Shrine Bowl and Super Bowl. Uh, I haven't been home a lot, and I've been missing my own bed. And I actually got a new one about two months ago. Uh, there's a company that reached out to me. They're called Bear Mattress. And they wanted to work with me and I said, you know, give me a, a couple months to test out the mattress first before I say yes. And then I tested it out and I loved it. And then I went to Dallas and, and then I came out here and I miss that mattress very much. And so if you yourself are in need for a new mattress, I do think you should consider trying out Bear. You do get a 120 night sleep trial with Bear mattresses so you can try them out first, obviously, just like I did. The mattress ships right to your door and shipping is free in the U.S., by the way and it comes in a box so it's really easy to set up. You don't have to just haul a giant bulky mattress through your front door and then down a hallway. It just comes in a box so you can put it wherever you wanna put it and then you set it up. The mattresses are fiberglass free and in terms of matching you to the correct mattress, you could take the sleep quiz on Bear's website and that quiz will match you to a mattress based on your body type and sleep preferences. So once again, if you're in the market for a new mattress, you're shopping around right now, uh, you know, I know everybody's having president sales right now, including Bear Mattress. There is a president sale going on. 
But if you're interested in trying it out, go to BearMattress.com slash Brett. Use promo code Brett. That will give you 40% off your mattress and $400 in sleep accessories as well. That is actually a better deal than what's on the website right now. So again, if you want an even better deal, use my promo code Brett. So thank you once again to Bear Mattress for sponsoring today's show and helping to make it possible. Uh, My audience appreciates my sponsors as much as I do because ideally, if you're still here, you like the content. And we have a lot more content coming, by the way, like weeks and weeks and weeks of content that I recorded out here that I think you guys are going to like a lot. It's going to be a busy draft season. So buckle up, more coming next week, and I'll see you then.